Yeah, this is uh, Bang Bang Ray Hill. Um, yeah, I've just come back from a little walk. Uh, yeah, and you know, you're thinking about things and what you're going to say and this, that, and the other. So, anyway, Chelsea Prison, yeah, uh, was a prison that was unbelievable, you know, um, just unbelievable prison, yeah. Uh, everything you wanted, you got. Um, I had a couple of screws on my, uh, on my, put, on my comments, yeah, saying to me, nah, Chelmsford could never have been like that, yeah, but it was. And one well, of some of the fantastic things that's happened to me in that prison, yeah. I remember then, um, when the, when the governor, we had a good governor, mate. We had one of the best governors you could possibly have. And, uh, and the vicar as well. The vicar's worst of it, you know what I mean? It's really all my life. And they decided, um, to give us a, a show, yeah? So what did they do? They got a lot of ballerinas, young ballerinas, what, 18s, 19s, 21s, 22s, ballerinas. I'm not on about, like, I'm on about ballerinas with the leotards and all that, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's geezers in there doing big, I was doing the big bird, but big, big sentences, you know what I mean? So they've never, ever seen that, only, only in their magazines, you know, and, and all that, yeah. But never, but never, like, telly was, televisions weren't about, there wasn't no televisions in the cells, there was only record players or, or your, or your radio, which your Roberts and your hacker, you know. And most people just had the record players and the hacker, you know. I had a record player and a Robinson's Rambler, yeah. So it's, it's, and we had really everything we wanted. I, had, I even had an armchair in my cell. Seriously, it was, a, it was a joke, mate. And uh, bed spreads, curtains and all that. And yeah, but seriously, it's mad. You could get away with blue murders in it. It was just so nice, relaxed. There were no problems. It was everybody just done their bird easy, no problems. And when they put on the board that in the chapel, they're going to do uh, a, a night show for, uh, for us um, ballerinas. <laughs> Seriously, and uh, went upstairs and sitting down there, it like it come down a bit in, in a bit of a thing, thick, and it was all the stage there, and you sit up top, and you can imagine, can't you? It was about an hour show, all these ballerinas dancing up and down, doing all sorts of things. Uh, every, let me tell you, so everybody that night was uh, quiet in their cells, <laughs> no, no noises. Well, not noises like uh, playing music and all that. It was just going mad, you know what I mean? I just imagine they were playing with themselves something itself, but I was one of them going mad, you know what I mean? Seeing these ballerinas flying around doing all their bits and pieces. It's mad. And then they had um, a couple of groups uh, in there, upstairs in the, in the chapel. And yeah, they, and, and, and it was good. The, the, the governor really looked after us, you know what I mean? And one day, mate, um, a funky came on, something came on the board. And it said um, the Sex Pistols are coming to Chelmsford Prison to give us a show. Nah, never. They really, they wasn't even really known then, you know what I mean? The Sex Pistols are coming to give us a show in the gym, right, in the gymnasium, because that was the biggest one. It was the biggest place they could come to and give us a show. Nah, never. Sex Pistols, everybody's... Uh, sex pistols this, sex pistols that, you know what I mean? And uh, we all got, we all sat around uh, it, it, downstairs in the gym. Me, uh, Toby Ludlow, Dave Potter, uh, Peter Lyons, Becky Green, Tony Eglin, uh, Jimmy Tibber, uh, Jimmy Tibbs, the old man Jimmy Tibbs, Ronnie Bender, uh, Lou Swallow, Terry Millman, oh, there was loads, loads in there, yeah, loads, all just waiting for this group to come in, Sex Pistols. Everybody's heard about them, everybody knows in that cases, people were seeing them on the, you didn't have telly in your cell, but you have tellies at the end, yeah, in the television room, so everybody's seen these Sex Pistols on top of the pops and all that crap, yeah. This is 1978. 78, I think it's 77, 78, when they come through, I think it was 78 actually. And when they come in, uh, they started on the stage, and then they started shouting about about us lot. You got nutters in there, and I thank you, Fraser's, and, and Ludlow's, my mates, and David, 
they were, you know, there's loads of nut nuts in there, you know, I'm one of them, I'm <laughs> all nuts in there, for doing big bits of birds. And he got his sex pistol, Johnny Rotten, shouting out, you lot are in here, you're all this, you're all that, how can you let these people, look at the state of these people, lock you up, lock you up for long times, all you got is a couple of gates, and nothing, you all one ace. There was birds of space. <laughs> we was going to kill him. We was going to kill him. There was absolute pain the moan in there. We was going to, honestly, there was people in there that was going to mull them. They got out there by the skin of their teeth. And they made the records about Chelsea Prison. It's, people must, uh, you can hear it if you play, if you go to the Sex Pistols in Shops of Prison, yeah? And they actually made a record about us, a record about us, how about that, you know what I mean? And it was just good. I mean, come on, to get that in the prison, and ballerinas as well, that was fantastic. And uh, we used to get lots of rugby players in now, um, good rugby teams. Uh, the, I've got the, the, everybody in that prison had it easy. You had it easy. There was no any hardship or nothing. We all had it easy. And then, um, for some reason, uh, for some reason, that um, there was uh, someone, we believe, uh, there's Scrooge belief, and that someone in the chapel set light to the, uh, to, to, to the gym, uh, set light to the, to the prison, yeah? From the chapel, they say. And some say it was from the library. I don't know, I, don't, I can't really remember what happened, but you know, you get through bits and pieces. Uh, say it was a chapel, and then they got a few people in and said this, that, and the other. And when it burnt, when it was burning down, we was in the gym, you know? And we was all training in the gym, and all of a sudden the lights went out, and smoke started coming high. It, like, it comes high, didn't it? It started floating, floating. It was all dark in the gym, but little lights in the corner, but you could see it floating, the, the, the smoke. And people, you can imagine, you imagine being in a prison where you're seeing ballerinas, right? You can't believe it, in a, you know what I mean? And the next minute you're seeing a band, a group that was absolutely famous. Now, even, come on, they've made films about these guys. And they're in, they're in terms of prison also, um, really just really started as such, you know, and come in to see us boys and give us, give us a show. And in the end, they had to get that uh, run out there, yeah, because they took it, they took it too far, yeah. And then, uh, we was down the gym and the smoke come up and all this, that, and the other. And they said that we've all got to get out of the, uh, out of the gym and there's a fire in the prison. Don't rush, don't rush. No need to panic. Um, it's only a little fire, so everyone got to go to the uh, visit room just while the, while the fire is being sorted. So as you're walking down down this big um, like walkway to to, to to the gate to go to, to go to the visit room, above is the cells, but right above where the where the where the um, where the chapel was, right there was all nonces, you know. All the nonsense up there, weren't they? So they were shouting out the windows, please let us out. We're going to die. All the flames are going everywhere. You know what I mean? Let us out. We're dying and dying. So we were walking towards uh, the visit rooms, uh, all of us. I mean, we've all got gym stuff on, most of us, you know what I mean? All, uh, the wind started coming out and a lot of people were going, out and, going outside into the, into the compounds and all this, that and the other, but no one... And I mean, no one escaped. Unbelievable when you think of it. It was so good to Nick. I don't think anybody wanted to leave it, you know what I mean? Just, you know, no one ever escaped. And when we walked in the gymnasium, a uh, few people in there that I'd have, I've had bad brows with, that, um, that we could see that they they wanted to come on me. Uh, but it must have been nice, but it's so, it was so thin. Anyway, it never happens. All of a sudden, PO comes in, or the SO, Jack, little Jack said, and said, right, what's happened in a, in a minute? Um, it's a big fire. It uh, looks like it's burning down after, after prison. The centre's going. The actual centre's going. Within the centre, there's this 
big, big bell, yeah, massive bell, big bronze bell, yeah, and it's used every day, and they use it for movement when we have bang up and dinner times, tea times, and all this medication. I think it's, you know, two bang, bangs of medication and all this crap, yeah? But it's always been your bong massive, yeah? And you can hear this bell going, I suppose they don't want to, just want to get people out of the place, yeah? Crash, crash, crash. And you're thinking, my God, and all of a sudden they come into us and say, what? Right, uh, everyone's being shipped out. Uh, the prisons are being set alight. The centre is the first place where, where you know where, where the chapel was near. It's gonna what's going what's gone up, yeah. And also in 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 actually <laughs> often it's crazy. Also in the centre, there's the place where they all had their medication. The bell go wild for to come walk down the wings from the wings to go and get your medication. So all the people, <laughs> so all the people, what are in the visit room are going mad because they want their medication. They're not all about the prison being burnt down. They want their medication. So anyway, so it, it comes in. Eventually, the med comes in with trolleys and bits and pieces. To anything to keep people calm. They was bringing, bringing food in from the kitchen, drink in from the kitchen, whatever you wanted, milk, sugar, so anything you wanted you was getting, but they didn't want, an up, didn't want it to go spark a big spark and everybody going nuts there because it's right by the gate the visitor was right on the gate you can imagine can't you they've got maybe 200, 150 people with a visit room and the rest of the yard and all this that and the other it's old bill five engines flying about old bill running around everywhere it's bad and uh anyway so they started coming they all of a sudden they started coming talking to us say look um food's going to come they started dishing us out really Nice food, mate. And that is all. The kitchen, the kitchen, obviously the kitchen got me shut down, but they got lots of sandwiches from the kitchen. I made sandwiches and bits and pieces for everybody to have sandwiches and a drink and something other. But those, whatever you wanted, you, you could get. And then they started uh, moving us, yeah? This is funny. You got all the faces, right? They're all getting moved. Most of them got the ones with you. They're going, it's all been alley, an alley, big allocation centre, really, where everybody's going. You've got Lewis Prison, uh, Blunderson's, everywhere. Oh, every, people going everywhere. Wandsworth, Scrubs, The Ville, Brixton. Everybody's being moved. You can imagine, can't you? You're all in a single cell. You're getting whatever you want. It's the blight, the Knicks, like a, just the best Nick you could ever, ever go to. And what they do, it's going to. Burn it, want to kill the person whoever wanted to burn the prison down. You know what I mean? Everyone's going nuts. But not only are they going nuts, but most of the people in the gym and most of the people have got shipped out. Right? There was all, I mean, people, they were all told to get out of their cell, get downstairs. There's a bit of fire that's going to be sorted. But no one said, right, while you're at it, get all your stuff out of your cell, all your belongings out of your cell, and go anyway. Because it would be so much for people to put all the belongings and get them run around the pitch petrified. So they just shut themselves up and all people's belongings in there. And you can imagine, can't you, uh, when you go to Wandsworth, uh, when we went to Wandsworth, mate, let me tell you something, when we went to Wandsworth, it was the funniest place I've ever been in my life. I've been to Wandsworth a couple of times, but when I say I've been to Wandsworth a couple of times, when I was there, um, let me tell you what happened when I first got there. I got there because I was so big. Yeah, I was massive. I was massive, mate, massive. I they couldn't even fit me in a black Mariah. Listen, back, big vans, black Mariahs, eight each side, little cubicles, little ones. Yeah, and I couldn't even fit me in there. So they put me in a chair in the middle, handcuffed to a screw. I could anyone could have gone. It'd be me. You know, about to pull the screw down with me anyway. So. We 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 wind up there telling us we're going to, we're going to ones with bus behind us going to Brixton bus behind that is going to the Scrubs and it's so and so and so and so. So anyway, get off get off at uh, ones I by mistake tread on this chief the number one chief's foot. He's gone mad, crash crash crash. What's your name? I said Rail. Go get your gear. Go to the thing. Got all this. I'm taking up, mate. They can't get nothing to fit me. 
Get your trousers, but they can't get no shirts. And in ones of them days, you had to wear a shirt or a T-shirt, but nine times out of ten, it had to be a shirt. So they give me a cut of T-shirts, but these T-shirts were like massive, massive waists. And the shoulders were, I mean, it was everything was too tight. The arms were tight, it was massive arms. I had 20, I had 22 inch arms. <laughs> 22 inch arms, massive arms. I was doing it all day long, massive, crazy. So then they couldn't get no shirts. And, they, and anyway, they got these shirts. There was absolutely ginormous shirts. So about 48 waist. My well, waist is big as big now, about 46. But then 48 waist was massive, you know. And these big shirts and, you know, but the collar was really tight. The wrists I couldn't do up. Uh, the shirt was all tight on my arms. I'm walking, you're walking now towards the centre. The centre in Wandsworth, uh, you're not allowed to walk across that centre. There's only two people that have done that walk across that centre and never, ever, ever anything's happened to them. That's Fraser. Thank you, Fraser. And and uh, what is it? To, uh, uh, sorry, mate. You know what I'm like? A bit thing, a bit uh, thing. It was... Uh, um, Roy Shaw, yeah? Roy Shaw and, and thank you, Fraser. The only two people that's ever walked across that centre without causing... A problem. I think there might have been maybe uh, there's a couple more or one more I've been told about. But anyway, so you can't walk across that centre. It's you it's, it's, it can't do it, mate. It's all black and all this and every day, every mo every every morning. It can't walk across it. We've got to clean it. They go across there and clean it all black polish and pff, all black polish and clean it. Everything in them days was slates. All the landings were slates. And they got polished with boot polish. Yeah, polish. Only polish. Polish. <laughs> I'm joking. So, we can't walk across the centre. Uh, the guys, the screws in the centre thinks they're, um, they're different, they're different breed of people. They're not, they're not, they're not humans, you know what I mean? They come out, no, I don't know where they come from, but they're not human, yeah? It's a different breed altogether. That we are human beings, yeah? And they want to treat you like absolute shit, right? And they're talking to you like you are a bit of shit. And they're, and the, you know, in them days, in them days, screws were quite big lumps. There's all ex military police, big old, big, big fucking things, yeah. And I'm walking towards the centre, waiting to be told where to go. Don't go in the centre, don't walk on it. Tell me where to go. I think I'm going to be ring, see them, quite sure. Eh? And the screw rushes up to me, I've got this shirt and I can't do the wrist, I can't do the thing up, right? But it's muscular, I'm all muscular in the ring, right? Screw runs up, runs up to me. He went, do that, do that, do that, so wrist up. I said, I can't do that, I'm going He said, do that wrist up now, was your neck. So, so I went, oh, you do it up, you show me how to do it up, mate. And he was struggling, it was about an inch away from where it had to be done. I was just too big, couldn't do it, right? He went, move the button. I said, but if I move the button, I'm still not going to be able to do it up. Anyway, they give me a, a little needle and a thing, yeah, to take it back to my cell, all right, and to do it. In ones if you have a needle, it's like, it's gold dust because you can split up, split your, your, um, your, 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 your uh, matches. You know, pe some people split their matches and make eight matches out of one match. Seriously, let's split it all up, yeah. Anyway, so... They give me, they give me this stuff. I go to the cell. The cells in there. So, uh, anyway, not so, not so bad. I was on the fees, I think. Or the fours, can't really remember. But all the old hands, like Wally Bender. I don't think Frankie Face was there. Frankie Face had been shipped out. The Tibbses. Uh, loads of people. Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Malloy. Was it Ronnie Malloy? I think Ronnie Malloy. There was other people in there. There was loads of, yeah, Ronnie Malloy was there. There was, for, uh, there was Terry Millman, Lou Swallow. There is a low. It was packed with proper proper people, and because they've all been singled up for maybe five six years in Chelmsford Prison, they're now getting to a prison where they've got to be three up. The lucky ones got two up. I was the lucky one. I got two up, but I was up in the, up in the threes. So always, you're looking over the landing. 
and all we can see rather than handling is beds. Beds, lockers, piss pots, everything over the land. What up? There's not that many screws there because they've all gone. A lot of screws have come back, but there ain't that many screws to really to control it. They're all going mad, aren't they? Because they haven't put them into free up, free up cells. Stinking cells, where they've had their own cells, had everything they wanted, all the drinks, and everything, yeah? Record players and all that, and the, rac the rackers, the, the Robertson Ramblers, and all, their, all that, all their belongings, their records, everything, all right? All their letters, and they're going in the cell where it stinks, people smoking, and they're going in there two or three in the cell. They ain't having that, mate. There's murders. <laughs> there ain't enough screws to control it. Honestly, there ain't enough screws, mate. And they didn't bang us up. They didn't bang them people up for, forever. They didn't seem all night long shouting, screaming, shout. There was all bunk beds, beds going over the, over the, over the top, over the balconies. There was fucking cupboards going over there, piss pots going over there. Everyone's crashing and smashing the doors. You can imagine, can't you? Anyway, uh, in the morning, um, in, in, ones if you've got to wear a shirt to go and collect your fucking water or a t-shirt. So the t-shirt's like a second skin to me, so I put a t-shirt on, yeah? I'm walking towards the, the slop out thing. Two screws rushed over me, rushed, pushed me in the cell. They went to me, wow, mate, where'd you get, how'd you get the size you on? Are you on the woods? on still, steroids? I went, what's that, mate? He went, you're on steroids. I went, no, nah, mate, not at all. Oh, he said, you're massive. How'd you get that big? My arms are huge, 22 inches long. Big biceps, big triceps. And they couldn't believe it. So I said to them, I was just like a thing called baker's yeast, yeah? And it used to thin my blood up, and I used to pump, and it would pump, and pump, and I got massive, yeah? And they was going, wow, Rolls huge, you're massive. And at that time, there was a guy in there called Taylor. What was his name? Taylor. He, he, he had, he, I think it was that time. It might not have been, it might have been another time. I can't remember, it was such a long time ago. Robert, Bobby, was it, Robert, was it, not? anyway, Taylor, he was, he won the thing for the strongest uh, man competition. You know, he used to have a, a, a part, big part in the strongest man, you know. He won that. And he's a prison officer and he was a gym all, gym all, I could be, gym instructor. And he won, he won that competition, right? Strongest man. And he was huge. He was massive, mate. He had veins as big as my finger. He was definitely on the roids. And I'm walking across the land and he come rushing the wall, boom, boom. He went, come a quick word, mate. And what's up? He went, what's your name? I said, Rayo. He said, listen, he said, I've been told you that you're being shipped out, uh, maybe today or tomorrow, of your brother Keith, yeah? I went, what's my, my brother Keith ain't here, is he? He said, no, 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 over a guy called John, a Dixie. Well, it's Dixie Dean. Well, his dad was called Dixie Dean. Dixie Dean was the chief of Wandsworth. So Dixie Dean was the one I saw on his feet. Dixie Dean, his, nose, his son John, works in Wandsworth Prison as an electrical engineer. Still a screw. And I can't be there for that reason, because my brother's, he's a mate of his. My brother, I'm going to kill him anyway. <laughs> he's a mate of his. So this Taylor, Phil Taylor, wasn't it? I can't remember. He went to me, he went, you're massive, mate. He said, I've never seen anybody as big as you come in prison. He said, listen, he said, uh, uh, my name's Phil, I think it was Phil Taylor. He said, look, I'm, uh, Mr., I'm going for the Mr. World, the strongest man. He said, I bet he won it, you know, he did win it. And... Uh, <laughs> He went, look, he said, uh, I'll be told you're going, maybe tomorrow or the next day, but come down to the gym. Uh, he said, look, when, when, when you bang up and you come out, you get open, you're up, just slop out, come down to the centre, I'll be waiting for you. I went down there and uh, he took me to the gym. Philip, Phil Taylor, I think, that's it, Phil Taylor. Took me to the gym and uh, had a workout with me, yeah, seriously. And he couldn't believe the power. He couldn't believe how powerful it was, you know what I mean? I mean, when I was in Chelsea Prison, yeah, we used to, uh, we had dumbbells. Only like 100 pound dumbbells. It's a lot of weight though, 100 pounds. It wasn't no kilo weights, it was all pound weights then. 100 pound dumbbells, I used to crash. I used to bash them out, 100 pound dumbbells. Bash them out. 
and I could do, I could do three forty, three sixty pounds. People go, like, no, you can't do that. But I was do three forty, three sixty pounds on an incline, on the incline. But I was do it with blocks of wood. Listen, you're watching me now and hearing me now. Do this and you get yourself into the gym and do this. It works. I'm telling you, massive. Get free, get a bit of wood, about ten inches, maybe high. 10 inches high by about, what, 14 inches long and about, what, 8 inches wide. All right? 8, 14, 6. What you do, you got, when you're doing your bar, you do your bar, bar, bar inclines, bar bench press, not on a decline, don't work on a decline, yeah, but only on an inc decline, incline, sorry, and a bench. You put a bit of wood there, someone holds a bit of wood, you come down, boop, you touch, boop, up, and you'd be surprised what sort of weight you can use, yeah? And after a while, you get, you think, and all of a sudden you take the block out, it could be a month, six weeks, and you take the block out and you start doing it normal ones, you think, you get to there, and it flies up, you know what I mean? And it's unbelievable, mate, how powerful you become. As I said, I was doing 343, I'm telling you, silly weights. And he said to me, um, what sort of deadlifts you're doing? I said, look, I ain't really done a lot of deadlifts um, in Chelsea Prison, but what I did do, I've done a lot of stiff-legged deadlifts, loads of stiff-legged deadlifts, and we did do deadlifts on, on competitions, yeah? So I said, what was your weight? I said, well, if, when I was a YP, I was doing 795 pounds deadlift. He went, you're mad, you know, pounds, not, it, not, not kilos, was it, was it, being well, well. He went, my God. He said, that's a lot of weight. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he set out, he set out um, some some deadlift for me, and dead, stairs leg is deadlift for me, and and I was, you know, I mean, I wasn't, if this take it nice and easy, I was repping, I was repping uh, 300 pounds, 400 pounds, easy, you know what I mean? Easy, repping it with the block, because you could put the block as deadlifts, yeah? It's, and, and do it like that, I was, it was unbelievable what I was doing, yeah? I was doing phenomenal, phenomenal weights, mate. You know, weights you, you wouldn't, uh, you couldn't imagine, you know what I mean? I think it was seven, three ninety five. It was on pounds. That was kilos. Three ninety five. I think it was. Yeah, three hundred ninety five. Yeah, it was. Yeah, unbelievable isn't it? For, for a kid to do that. I was only nineteen, you know, when I was doing that in my in, in, in my YP, and crazy three hundred seventy five. No, that's arc at me. I knew it was pounds. It was seven hundred eighty five pounds, 785 pounds, not kilos, pounds, yeah, to do a deadlift with 785 pounds as a kid, or 95 pounds, something like that, it was unbelievable, right, and when I was showing Taylor um, what I was doing, he was so impressed, mate, he went, look, when you get, when you go to uh, Chelsea Prison, uh, not to uh, ones, uh, to the scrubs, sorry, getting all tongue-tied, when he goes to the scrubs, uh, Check out, check out the uh, the people in the scrubs for me, and uh, tell them uh, you know be a gym owner. But when I went to the scrubs, I didn't have long left, but they gave me a job and a work, yeah. Anyway, and when I got to, but let's, let's talk a little bit about Wandsworth, yeah. I mean, uh, when I when I when I went when I went there and a from Chelsea, and all your faces that was, went there, uh, all your nice proper people. And they was all gated, mate. You could see, you could see in their faces. I mean, I was going to, I was going to uh, 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 Scrubs, uh, which is to ones of his palace, isn't it? Um, I got a job. One, I got a good job when I went to the Scrubs on the works. Yeah, I was working with these called Paddy, Paddy, uh, Paddy Reese, Paddy Reese, or no, not Paddy. I call him Paddy Reese. Uh, Taffy Reese, yeah, a big raw scoop. He was good through he was. And anyway. I can't say no more, there's a lot more, it goes on and on and on, for like, it goes on and on and on and on, yeah, and it doesn't stop. But uh, this is just a little bit, I do want to go no further in Chelmsford Prison, really, um, just to let you know um, wait, the way Chelmsford was, Chelmsford Prison, and the amount of nice people that was there, and to leave all your mates, uh, and some good mates in there, mate, in Chelmsford. I mean, people in there that, Today, more like a lot, a lot of them dead, yeah. Uh, but the ones who are alive, like myself, I was only young when, when I was in there. Um, but proper nice people. I got a young, young Jimmy Tibbs. Uh, he's alive still. 
He's a born again Christian now, I believe. Uh, I think the old, I don't know the old man's still alive. Big uh, Jimmy Tibbs. Uh, he was a proper nice man, mate, Jim. I mean, I was, I see him. He was a butcher in in the kitchen. I was I was I won that one on on the bakers, but I was in the between the potatoes at first, right next to the butchers, yeah, and. I got to know him very well, well, Jim. And not a nice, nice man, mate. But big. His hands was twice as big as mine. Do you know what I mean? My, my, one, my two hands was like one of his. Huge man. Big shoulders. Where he worked in the, in the meat market, I think he worked in the meat market. He was massive. Big neck. And when he went to when he went to the gym, right, he, uh, his son got him to go to the gym, because I think it was on the way. Uh, to, 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 to a decat or getting out or something, I can't remember now. But when the Nick burnt down, I think it was with us when we walked to different Nicks. But he he never touched a weight in his life before. And he was benching 100 kilos. Yeah, 100 kilos. That's 220 pounds. He was benching two plates on the side with the collars. He was benching that for 10. Never ever picked a weight up in his life, you know what I mean? He had massive wrists, shoulders were huge, and his arms, right, they didn't look big, right, because they weren't defined. But his arms must have been 19 inches, 20 inches, honestly. They wasn't muscular, they were just big, powerful shoulders, mate. I loved him, the old man, proper, proper man. He must have gutted Ronnie Malloy. When the nick burnt down, because Ronnie Lloyd must have left a fortune, must have left a fortune there, because he was in charge of the pantry and he was earning the fortune on him. Ronnie Malloy is one of the silver bullion uh, like mob, yeah? Anyway, this is Bang Bang Mail. There's a lot more, but I can't keep going. <laughs> this is Bang Bang Mail. Please like and subscribe, and uh, good night, yeah? Not good night, but good night, good night. Take care, nice one.